Hi there, my name is John Knudsen. I'm one of the pastors at CLF. I just want to chat with you about life, apologetics, and we know about God and, and hold Jesus and Holy Spirit. Now we know what they said in the Bible is true. Okay, so let's talk about what fasting isn't. Well, fasting is not just about food. When we think about fasting, we often think about well, food. We think we're gonna go on a diet or intermittent fasting, etc. And, and these are things we see in our culture actually quite often. The removal of food to better help our body, whether we lose weight or it's just about general health. We often then attribute fasting to food. But the reality is fasting is actually just about self-denial. And that's not always food. Now, I would suggest that you can fast food, that you should fast food. Food is really hard, but for some of you, it might be your cell phone, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, etc. It's about taking away a muse that feeds your human body and replacing it with Jesus in prayer. So if you're going to fast lunch, you can't just work through lunch. You actually have to take your lunch time and pray when you would have been eating. It's not an act of just self-denial, although that's a very important part of it. Fasting is, is more about a spiritual component, replacing that sustenance, that food, with a prayer and relationship with Jesus. Self-denial without adding Jesus really isn't doing very much. It is good spiritual practice, but it isn't the full thing that God wants to do in and through you. Fasting isn't just something you do once. Here we go. So, We've gotten into a belief system that we, well, we, at least we have to fast once in our life. In fact, I, I would bet that most of us can point to a time in our life when we fasted for an answer to prayer or for something similar. But the reality is fasting isn't something that we just do once. It's a part of a regular spiritual journey with Jesus. If you don't have a spiritual practice that includes fasting more than once a year, I'm going to tell you right now, probably you should start developing that habit with Jesus. Now, if we look at the book of Acts, we can see that they often prayed and fasted, like actually a lot. Now, let's look at our own history in the last hundred years. Every major move of God and the Holy Spirit has started with believers, you and me, living a lifestyle and doing spiritual disciplines that include fasting and praying at the forefront. See, Jesus uses the term in Matthew 16, verse 7, but when you fast, then proceeds to give some insight on how you should look while you're fasting and key things you're grappling with as you're doing it. But the term when indicates that fasting actually should be a regular part of believers' life. In fact, it was actually a regular part of the Jewish person's life. The truth is, is if you want to feel full of the manifest presence of God in your life, or you want to, or maybe if you're feeling far from God, begin fasting one meal a week. Then, maybe after a month, make it two meals. Maybe then make it full day and replace those meals with praying to God. Number three is fasting is not just what we do when we want something from God. Now, we see in scripture that many times, even in Acts and other places, even Jesus himself, they fasted and waited on God for an answer. Or where we see believers praying in hopes for something. But the reality is, is that when we take on the spiritual discipline of prayer and fasting, we're actually leading ourselves to a place where God can meet us again. Take Acts 13, where the leaders were fasting and praying for Paul and Barnabas just before they sent them into the mission field. Their calling and their leading came from fasting and praying. Maybe in this last year, you felt far from God, drained, tired, lonely, fed up, sad, heavy burden. Now is the time to fast and pray. If you want to have spirit, your spirit revived in the presence of a living God, it takes the spiritual discipline of fasting and praying, coupled with the spiritual discipline of reading your Bible. This is where Jesus wants to meet us, in community, in relationship, in the Word, which is the Bible, and in prayer. Okay, so let's recap for today. Number one, fasting isn't about food. It's actually about your heart focusing on God. And you can fast just about anything, as long as whatever you're removing is replaced by prayer and time with God. Number two, it's not something you do just once a year. It is an ongoing spiritual discipline. Dare I even say weekly or monthly? Number three, fasting is not just what we do when we want something from God. It's about connecting with the heart of God. It's about giving something up on purpose to meet with Jesus. I want to challenge you here. I think that God is actually challenging us as believers to fast 
and pray. And I want to challenge you to start with one meal. For the next week, I want you to pick a meal and I want you to take it away. It could be lunch, could be breakfast, could be dinner. I don't know. And take that time and I want you to pray and ask God something. Just one meal in this next seven days. And when you see the next video, we're going to talk about ways to pray when we're fasting. So keep a watch for that. And I challenge you to fast and pray. It's time for us to get down on our knees and wait for Jesus to speak to, in, and through us to those around us. Well, I want to thank you for watching all the way through. Uh, we're going to also talk about prayer, like I said, next week, and I'm looking forward to that conversation. But for now, my name is John, and peace.